God prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. That's a verse from the 23rd Psalm that most of us know by heart. What you may not know is that if you don't watch out, an uninvited guest will pull up a seat at your table. Are you winning the battle for your mind? Louis Giglio, pastor of Passion City Church in Atlanta, says we all lose that battle, but we don't have to. In his new book, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table, Pastor Giglio helps us take control of our thoughts and emotions and reject lies. Take the place prepared for you and don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Pastor Louis Giglio joins us now via Skype. Pastor, welcome back to the 700 Club. So great to be with you today. It's amazing to see you and thanks for having me on. Oh, our pleasure. Well, first of all, what does it mean for God to prepare a table before us? What an amazing promise. You know, the 23rd Psalm is so well known for most everybody on planet Earth, but we miss out on that verse five where our shepherd is saying, no matter what situation you're in, no matter what the circumstance, whatever is surrounding you, the opposition, the hardship, our shepherd prepares a table for us right in the middle of the conflict. He said he anoints our head with oil and our cup overflows. So in the middle of every situation, Jesus provides what we need. Amen. Well, you go through five lies that the enemy uses to take a seat at that table. What are some of those? Yeah, and just make sure people know today, we're talking about the capital E enemy, not the ones that we're supposed to love and, uh, you know, treat well, the people in life that maybe are uh, out to get us in some way. But we're talking about our adversary who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And you know he's at your table. If you're hearing lies like this, A, it's better at another table than the table Jesus prepared. <laughs> you know the enemy he has pulled up a seat at your table. If you're hearing that you're not good enough, you know the enemy is at your table. If you're hearing you're not going to make it through this season of life or this circumstance, you know the enemy is at your table. Pastor, one of the lies, and you just cited it, is that is the belief that we're not good enough. And I think we all hear that lie from time to time. But on, on the other hand, aren't Christians supposed to be humble? You know, being humble is a reflection of being in the presence of God. So humility for me isn't a character trait you work on. It's the byproduct of being with Jesus. When you're with God, you realize you are small and he is great. But you, when you're with God, you don't realize that you don't matter to God. You realize how much you matter to God. And our good shepherd books this table, made the reservation, paid for it with his own life, and is the guest at the table so that each one of us can have a relationship with him. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And that's how much every person matters to God. You are worth Jesus to God. Amen. And in your book, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table, you also discuss the misguided belief that there's no way out. How do we get out of situations where we've made a mistake and we're dealing with the consequences of our own actions? Well, you know, God promises us that in every temptation, he will provide a way out. That way starts by being a three door, garage door size way out. Uh, but the more we disobey God, the more we turn our back on that voice of the Holy Spirit, and the more we keep walking toward that temptation, the way out gets smaller and smaller and smaller until then it's too late. We've, we've done the wrong thing. But every step of the way, even up until the last instant, the Spirit of God is making ways. Call a friend, leave the house, unplug the computer, get out of the story, uh, say no to the invitation. There's always a way for us to step towards God and away from the temptation. And even if you ignore all the red flags and you still do whatever it is, there's God's mercy, right? He'll still, he could still rescue you. Yeah, the enemy is a great tempter. He always creates these scenarios where he crops out all the disaster and gets us to focus on all the pleasure. But once we take the step and take the bait and make the fall, 
he instantly turns from, wow, this is going to be amazing, to our accuser. Mm. And he says, you're the dumbest person who's ever lived. You're a reject as a Christian. There's something wrong with you. God will never accept you, never love you. You'll never be back in a story with God again. And so the same one who was tempting us is now condemning us. And in both cases, follow the spirit beforehand, but look to the cross afterhand and let God convict us and lead us out of the condemnation back into a relationship with him. And you also talk about um, our need to embrace our true purpose. What, how do we find what that is? Well, I think for all of us, there are two things going on in life. There's our passion and our purpose. And every one of us today has a unique passion. We have a gift, an opportunity, a calling on our life, an aptitude, a love for something. That's our passion. Um, but all of us have the same purpose. We were all created by God and for God. And all of us today, using our various passions, were created to bring glory to our creator. And that's the ultimate purpose for everybody on this planet today, to know God, love him, enjoy him, and bring him glory. Amen. Well, we have just scratched the surface of Pastor Giglio's brand new book. It's called Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. It's available nationwide. Pastor Giglio, thanks for being with us. Always a pleasure to see you. It's great to see you as well. Thank you so much. God bless you.